it still says 8 o'clock, so I can claim to be on time. Only if you get started. Like that. <laughs> of course. I need to change the... It's, um, sometimes it's a pain sharing the channel, sometimes. It isn't just set up and ready to go. But then again. We'll Not everyone's as tech savvy as you are. No, I wouldn't want to try and do all of this by myself. You mean draw? <laughs> oh, nobody wants to see me draw. How are you, Matty? Pretty good, Dan. How are you? Not too bad. Very broken night, unfortunately. Um, lots of reasons for that. One of them was exciting, though. We had a storm come through. So I took the opportunity to get up after it had rained fairly heavily for about 10 or 15 minutes to go and check all of my plumbing. Mmm. And how did that go? It's all still plumbed. I count that as a win. I do. Damn good win. The problem is, is that it's still humid as heck. It's eighty-seven percent humidity. It's only twenty degrees, but that's like how you get snow, isn't it? Ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, if they were Fahrenheit's, yes. Oh, I thought it worked that way in Celsius too. That twenty <laughs> degree shit is way too cold. Twenty's too cold. That's actually old me. I've come to appreciate adult me has come to appreciate twenty degrees centigrade. Hmm. I do remember going to school on an icy, bitterly cold Brisbane morning, 20 degrees, <laughs> wrapped up in three layers of socks, <laughs> two jackets and a jumper and a hat. <laughs> uh, that, just translating, that's sweater for <laughs> our American friends. <laughs> Jump is something entirely different. Moving on. Oh, yeah, well, none of that going on. It's all boys' school. Well, now, hmm, do we go there? Probably not. Well, let me just say that there were steps taken to make sure that didn't happen. Right. It's only the direction of staff. Oh, it had nothing to do with the staff. Hmm. Yes, the only sex scandal that happened in my school when I was there is the principal's secretary and a couple of senior year boys. Mm. It was the principal who lost his job because he tried to get rid of the secretary for doing the wrong thing. Mm. But you can't fire a woman. So what are you painting today, Dan? Goblin arches. But the reason I'm painting goblin arches is because I'm using these guys as skirmishers. Well, there you go. So I undercoated them yesterday and I put their skin tone on them yesterday so we're straight into detail. You really want to get these done today, I can tell. Well, I'm under deadline pressure. Actually, if I really wanted to get them done, I'd have done a whole heck of a lot more yesterday. But I got sidetracked because not only did my radio control yacht turned up, my radio control tank turned up as well. So 
Well, well there you go. Started assembling that. <laughs> uh, well, there you go. Hmm. Maybe there's something to this asking the universe, and the universe provides stuff that my boss loves so much. Yeah, possibly. Or there's been a lull in online shopping, and the courier companies <laughs> are actually fairly efficient when they're not under ridiculous load, and it is possible to get something overnight from a different state. Who'd have thunk? Hmm. I've forgotten what that was like. Yeah, I think everybody's forgotten what that was like. I was gobsmacked. I was, what was even more gobsmacking is the first guy turned up. <laughs> so these are packages that were shipped at exactly the same time. They ended up being delivered from two different trucks about an hour and a half apart. So, yes. Extreme efficiency right there. Yeah. At least it showed up though. Oh yeah, very happy. I mean, now you can feel good about not having wasted all that money. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> buy something for your holiday and then it shows up not after it goes on holiday yeah, so, that, yeah, yeah. Now after we left we, we were having this discussion about if, if we've left and it turns up an hour later uh, am I going to have enough brownie points to get it to turn around to come back to get it probably not but it's a moot point now yeah, I feel sorry for your daughter-in-law. She hasn't gotten a free yacht. <laughs> this is true. Uh, you haven't got to the best bit of the story yet. She doesn't get the free tank either. Yeah, well, <laughs> damn right she doesn't. I've seen the damage on the side of her car. <laughs> yeah. Putting her drive a tank would be very good for society's health, I think. Uh to be fair, the damage on the side of their car was in receiving, not in giving. <sighs> the car was parked when somebody sideswiped it and kept going. As you do. As you do. No, the best part was is that, of course, I decanted a fair bit of what was in the yacht box, checked it all out, made sure it was all there, then put batteries in the transmitter and the receiver and turned it all on. Only the receiver went on, made good buzzing noises, but the transmitter didn't play, shall we say? And after about half an hour of battery swaps and muttering and cursing and googling and all that kind of stuff, I finally decided that the damn thing was DOA. And so I rang them and said, it's doing this and they said yeah take some photos of it we'll put an email together and we'll send the email off to the supplier and we'll get they'll, we'll get them to ship you a new one and i wasn't too bothered by this because i've got a radio transmitter i've got a fairly expensive radio transmitter as a matter of fact it's a six channel um digital proportional transmitter it's for flying fairly sophisticated RC aircraft like it'll do V-tail type mixing and things like that it's not one of these modern super programmable things it's a few years old but still isn't cheap um, and has good capability and I happen to have an, a receiver <coughs> in another model that I could transplant so I wasn't bothered by the transmitter and the receiver um, it was just inconvenient but anyhow so I duly hang up from him and I, I pick the transmitter up and turn it over to look for any identifying information on it um, open the back cover with the batteries in it just to take a photo to show that yes there were batteries in it because you know tech support um, turned it over and flipped the switch to show that when the, the switch was turned on there was no red light and said red light lit up 
made beeping noises. And I went, what? Then proceeded to test it another 25 times and it turned on and cycled as normal. Went and turned the receiver on and paired it with the receiver and it all worked. So I'm like, so is this like Jon Snow? Oh, you might not get that joke. Um, yeah. So now I have functional transmitter and functional receiver, and <laughs> I sent them an email going, yeah, it seems to be working. Sorry for the fuss. But you can be damn sure I'm taking that spare transmitter and receiver with me. So what was it, do you think, then? Loose connection. Ugh. You know, it never fails. The moment you ring up tech support, the moment you ring for on-site service, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. The moment you ask someone else for help, whatever it is that you're having problems with automatically starts working just mm -hmm. to make you look like an effing idiot. Yep. Never fails. Never, never fails. ever fails. Yep. Happens to me. I remember it happening to my mum when I was four. Yeah. I've seen it happen at work. I've seen it happen in many different workplaces it happens to you I'm glad it's not just me no no oh it's no it's crazy yeah but I'm glad it works well and I hope you get a lot of fun out of it on your holiday and you don't sink it in the first ten minutes <laughs> yes oh, well the, the bonus here is just that there are a couple of kayaks strapped onto a kayak trailer, so if I happen to get it stuck or <laughs> out of control or whatever, I can at least go after it. Ah, oh, Joe's struggling with the dogs. They don't know what's going on. They're off to the kennel. They can sense something's happening because there's changes going on in the house, but... Now, I was going to ask, are you taking them with? No. Uh, no. No. And who's looking after the cats? The daughter-in-law? Yeah, she'll come here every two to three days and clean out their litter trays and make sure that the feeder is still feeding. There's an automated feeder out there. Um... Let's call the feeder semi-automatic, shall we? Um, because it dispenses once a day. It, it can dispense up to eight times a day and range in the amounts it dispenses from quarter of a cup to two cups or something like that. Um, so it's a fairly sophisticated sort of a thing. But they figured out how to reach into it and reach up into the slot and flick the little fingers that like it's in a the dispensing fan it's, it's like a if you look at it end on it's like a cross and they, there's four fingers like sort of like that in, in the shape of a cross and so the, the food falls in and it sort of rotates around and these fingers flick as they go past a certain point and it makes sure that it dispenses all of the food into the tray but they're flexible, so they figured out how to reach in and flick them so that it, it opens a gap between them and the food falls through. So they can feed themselves as much as they like. Yeah, oh dear, oh dear. So, you, we're not able to use it as a diet control thing, if you understand my meaning. I do. Ah, <laughs> oh, these cats, they're so clever. And you just happen to have gotten the clever ones who are smart enough to have, you know, worked out that they can feed themselves mm. instead of just relying on humans yep. because, I don't know, you've got working class cats instead of regular cats. <laughs> yeah. Oh, now that song's stuck in my head. Yes. I'm 
sure there's so a cartoon in there somewhere. Oh, no doubt. Um, I remember seeing a meme of an Egyptian cat talking to a modern cat. And it was, the Egyptian cat says something like, How's life going? Uh, 5,000 years later, humans are still picking up our poop. Mm-hmm. And then it's uh, beneath it, it's a wolf and one of these miniature poodle, modern, sort of horrible, awful dogs. Yeah. <laughs> and the wolf's looking at it and it's like, what the fuck are you? <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> and the, the modern dog is like, oh, please pick me up so I can nap on the comfy chair. <laughs> <laughs> of meme created by cat lovers or maybe just a realist <laughs> <laughs> possibly you have a look at some of the modern cat breeds and you could have exactly the same thing you could have a cartoon of a lion looking at this modern weird ass modern cat breed going what the hell happened Doing a little bit of maintenance to my oh Agros dunes. Now I'm gonna have to do some maintenance to my tracksuit pants. Oh, nobody will worry about that stain, will I? <laughs> <coughs> Sir, you seem to have a brown stain in your crotch area. Why are you looking at my crotch area? Front or back? Oh, it's, well, it depends <laughs> on which way I put them on, I suppose. <laughs> oh, so, what are you up to this morning? Well, I have just found out that uh, my next commitment today has um, just been cancelled oh. for today because people have um, overextended themselves right so after you finish here I've got nothing but a free day to do painting wow. or well maybe I'll do some painting or editing yeah well, I need to do some of that too <laughs> honestly I've been putting that off for too long well, did I release an episode last weekend? You did. Oh, good. Then I'll give myself another week. Right. Uh, yes, I'm going to a fortnightly release schedule for as long as I have no content. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I hope you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. We're watching Firefly again. <laughs> the episode. Uh, yeah, okay. James Mathematics, where he's going, oh, do the math here. 10% of nothing is nothing. Divided by nothing is nothing. Carry the nothing. <laughs> uh, my favourite Jane Cobb was the chain of command. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The chain of command is a chain I get and beat you with until you <laughs> listen to me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, these pretty little lights. Did you dope him? <laughs> yes, but I expected it to kick in a lot sooner. Uh... Uh, Adam Baldwin's great in everything that he's been in. Yeah. Uh, what was the name of that damn... I've watched a couple of shows just for Adam Baldwin. Yeah. Um, bunk. That's the best one. But <laughs> yeah. yep. yep. He's just saying what everybody else is thinking. Or doing. Or doing. Uh, so there was a show called The Last Ship. Right. In which... Um, I don't know, some sort of bioweapon or disease depopulates the population of the globe by a lot, but not nearly as much as they actually think. Because, you know, you got to have bad guys to fight. Mm. 
Yeah. Uh, and the U.S. Navy ship has got the cure on it for some reason. And Baldwin plays the XO on it, and he's pretty good. Right. And I watched Castle, not for Nathan Fillion, but for Adam Baldwin and his mm. guest spots, yeah. <laughs> of which there are like three. Right. <laughs> in an eight se- uh, eight season show, yeah. <laughs> but that's why I watched Castle, not for Nathan Fillion, but for Adam Baldwin. Yeah. Anyway, good fun. Oh yeah. Joe says to me last night as we were watching the show, he said, I "Don't like Jane." I'm like, "You're not supposed to." He's an even bigger anti-hero than Mal. Mm -hmm. Emphasis on anti. Yep. But they're good characters. Well, they were at that. They're good good size and bad size. The reason it didn't take off is because people didn't understand why it was a science fiction show with western gunfights and horse chases and stuff like oh, that. Oh, and being at all out of order didn't help. Oh, yeah. It got pretty rough treatment as far as that was concerned. But... What do you think about Pretty that? rough. In Mississippi, they call that kind of rough treatment rape. <laughs> um, yeah. And I didn't, I didn't know anything about it. I'd never heard of it. And some we were having a discussion about um, sci-fi TV shows, and somebody said, "Oh, you should, you should have watched this." And I went, "Oh, when was that on?" And this was like after Gina Torres had shifted to Angel, and after Nathan Fillion had gone to Buffy, and you know. Because Firefly had been cancelled, and no, it was years after too. It was like two or three years afterwards, and I went, "Wow, this was spectacular." Well, I didn't come to Firefly until two thousand and twelve. I swear to God, mm. and it was because my flatmate at the time was watching Serenity. Yep, the movie on the TV, yep. and was like, "Dude, what's this? This is pretty cool." Yeah. Don't you know? And so he pulled out his Firefly DVD set and we proceeded to watch that. Yeah. And I'm like, why did no one tell me about this show ever before? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Oh, look, it's that chick from Stargate Atlantis. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's a chick from Deadpool. Well, Deadpool hadn't come out. Then, no. Then, but, yes, I would say that nowadays. Which? Are we referring to Marina Bakarin? Or? Well, she was on SG-1. Right. So it was, um, you know... Oh, God, what's her name? Jewel Stady? Yes. Yeah, she was a uh, main character on Atlantis for a couple of years. Oh, cool. If you needed a reason to watch that show. Mm-hmm. Shiny. As if you need a reason to watch Stargate, though. I love Stargate. It must have been later seasons, because I watched some of the early stuff. Yeah, season... Four and five, she was a main character. Okay. Oh, and the tail end of season three. I will say one thing for Atlantis. They weren't afraid of killing off main characters. Despite fan backlash. <laughs> What's the difference, primary difference between Atlantis and the original? Uh, they're in a different galaxy with a different set of bad guys. Right. But they also have um, a lot more access to spaceships than the SG-1 guys did at first. So they go around in spaceships 
as much as they go through the Stargate. Right. Which is pretty cool because I love spaceships. Like, I like. I grew up on Star Trek. Mm -hmm. So I like spaceships. I'm a spaceship nerd like that. And that's all it really takes to get me to watch something is spaceships. Or airships, for that matter. Mm. So you liked Beb 5 then? I did, but that's another show I didn't get to for years and years after. Mm. Like, I remember in, being in grade 9, so 1990, 1998, and my English teacher, Mr. Wachowski, saying in English class, you know, you should watch Babylon 5. It's frickin' great. Mm. Direct quote. And I'm like, yeah, sure, sir. No worries. We'll get to it eventually. And I didn't watch it until 2018. Right. So 20 years after the recommendation. Mm -hmm. And half the cast is already dead. And that's when I got to Babylon 5. Yeah. In the first season, I was a bit like, uh, ho-hum, this is a little weird, those first few episodes. And then it started all coming together. Mm -hmm. I'm like, holy shit, this is one of the greatest shows I've ever seen. Yeah. So yes, I like Babylon 5 quite a lot. Except for that final season. Well, nobody likes that final season. <laughs> <laughs> I still need to watch Crusade, though. I haven't seen that. Yeah, well, it's only ten episodes, I think, but it kind of just drops in the middle and yeah, maybe not. I don't want to get invested in another show that was cancelled before its time. Hmm. What's interesting to me was that J. Michael Straczynski has reached out to all of the original cast members and included all the, two of them still alive <laughs> Claudia Christian and Patricia Tolman yeah does want to do that reboot doesn't he he is doing the reboot but um, he's been keeping the original cast in the loop so Might well make all the few of them still around yeah there's not a heck of a lot on there nope Well, speaking of which, you heard that Rod Marsh had died. Yeah. Did you hear that Warnie's died too? Shane Warn. Yeah, Shane Warn yeah. died last night as well. Heart attack while on holiday in Thailand. Are you shitting me? No, I'm not. That's what I woke up to this morning. He can't have been that old. Marsh 52. His, Marsh was in his 70s. So yeah, Warne... Marsh was 74, Warn was 52. He's had a heart attack. Bloody hell. What do you want to bet he was fully COVID vaxxed? <gasps> and he did something to get his heart rate above 180. <laughs> uh, if that was all it took, I'd be dead by now. <laughs> 180, not 140. No, no. Trust me. When I'm cycling. Uh, my little heart monitor thingy has come back to saying 193, so... Well, maybe you got dud vaccines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I that, remember. Well, yeah, there you go. Oh, no, that's gone the way of paint god. AstraZeneca. Well, I'm kidding. <laughs> Yeah, Shane Warne died yesterday, last night. Just, you know, a couple of hours after he sent out a tweet saying, Vale Rod Marsh, and you're a great influence on my life and all that shit, he's just dropped off himself. Which is a hell of a thing to wake up to. Shit. So I wonder who's going to be number three. Because these things always happen in threes. In threes. Um... So, personal admission is that I've never actually liked 
Shane Warne. I appreciated him for his skill on the cricket field. He is a polarised, uh, was a polarising figure. Yeah, but uh, wasn't keen on his antics off the field. Oh boy, oh boy. The mess of that. Because he got the supermodel? No, 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 just because he said and did stupid stuff. Well, he did that on the field too. Yes, but, I mean, there's context. <laughs> yes, there is. <laughs> Oh my god. Like that's, oh, even, just... that's even worse than Steve Irwin and to some degree it's even worse than Peter Brock. Well, they both died doing what they love and one might assume that Warney did too, but Maybe. as you do on holiday in Thailand. Hmm. That is a real shock. Well, at least Bill Laurie's still around. Yeah, I think I might just give up on cricket altogether when Bill Laurie dies. Mm. I went searching not that long ago to see if Clive Lloyd was still kicking in the ears. Because your childhood's well and truly over when all your childhood heroes are dead. Mm. That's ridiculous. Like, I'm the same age as Shane Warne was. Very sobering. Yes, and that's kind of sucked the fun out of today, hasn't it? Sorry for that. No, that's all right. Well, Joe was saying that she thought that Lillian Marsh's record of I don't know what you'd call it. Wicked, wicked partnerships, and partnerships to to take wickets or something like that. Still stood. I think I'd heard that as well. Which, when you consider it, is remarkable. Given that the modern player plays quite a bit more than the. player of the 70s did. Uh, I'm just reading the Rod Marsh obituary in The Independent. Mm. Uh, the partnership, blah, 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 355 dismissals behind the stumps a world record at the time mm -hmm. so maybe it doesn't anymore but but that was but that's that a hell was... of a lot considering they only played what six or seven tests a year yeah exactly right but so was this in partnership with Lily or yeah yeah right well <clears throat> oh no 95 yeah 95 no. with Lily specifically yeah. 355 by himself. Yep. Which is, you know, a lot to... Yep. But it was the figure in combination with Lily that was supposed to be still standing. Like, and the next best was um, McGrath and... Gilchrist or something but anyhow I don't have these facts to hand so I don't know if they're true or not uh, it doesn't say anything about the 
the Lily partnership not being a record anymore. And here we are talking about cricket for an American audience. Well, you know, you get some exotic in their lives. That's a damn good game. It's a lot more interesting than baseball. Yes. Having played both, baseball's more interesting to play. You think? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, I, I didn't play baseball, but I say I played t-ball as a kid. Oh, I played t-ball. <laughs> it's basically the same thing. Not... No, like, you've, you've deleted one entire dimension, so... Oh, no many dimensions anyhow I played a lot of cricket so I was cricket obsessed as a kid I never took to the field outside of schoolyards. <laughs> what? I mean, I played domestic comps. Um, I, I was playing C grade games as a 16 year old. 15 year old. Under 16s. But I still played a couple of C grade games. Um, what killed it for me was that it was revealed that there was politics in the club and I was not part of the popular faction so you only need to be marginalised a couple of times as a teenager and you go well I've got other things to do mm. so yeah And like a lot of things, there was far too much emphasis on the after-game drinks. <laughs> oh, that's Australian sport. Mm. Or Australian work. But you know, you're, you're out on the cricket field to have fun, to, in, to enjoy yourself. It's a, you know, it's a competition and, and all that kind of stuff. And, and to be just going through the motions to get to stumps to open the bar it's like have we just missed the point now anyhow it was the 80s what are you going to do? Grow a mullet. Yes. <laughs> it's funny, I was going to say the 80s was just the 70s with silly haircuts.
31, huh? Shane on. You weren't tempted to go and see the musical? Didn't realise there was one. Yep. Shane Bourne, the musical. Who played Liz Hurley? It's <laughs> a good question. Might have been Liz Hurley. That would have been worth the price of admission. Possibly. Nothing was done by Eddie Perfect. Who do you think she did her best work? Austin Powers? Uh, probably. <laughs> Don't really recall anything else she was in. No, and that's the point. All right, I'm going to look now. <laughs> Excuse me. She's filming a movie, uh, one in post-production, one completed. She's still going. Busy. She's done TV shows recently. Let's see, what else has she done? She was in a Wonder Woman TV movie. Really? Oh, she was in Rumpole of the Bailey. Oh, right! I Yes, that's... I remember now. Actually, she was bloody hot in that, too. <laughs> so, it's 1988. A young Liz Hurley is uh, the daughter of... Uh, uh, stock brokerage uh, thing -o. Um, and she's dating a company employee a young boy from a criminal family who's you know made something of himself and gotten out of it and into the stock trading right and it turns out that dear old dad is the arch criminal because he's framed the the criminal boy for being a criminal for his uh, millions of dollars of illegal share trades, insider right. trading and all that. Yeah. But Liz Hurley plays the daughter slash girlfriend and she's freaking hot at it. Right. And I, I've seen that episode so many times and I always forget that it's her. I always remember that it's someone who went on to be sort of famous and it was one of her early roles, but I always forget the name and it was Liz Hurley. There you go. Yeah, seriously. Rumpole Very good looking girl in 1988. Yeah, to be fair, she's still pretty good looking. Pretty good looking in 2022. But this is before plastic surgery. Mm hmm. in things that I watch. Uh, Father Christmas is Back was her last uh, movie nope. that came out in which she played Father... Uh, 
Joanna Christmas. Before that, it was Then Came You. And then uh, eight episodes in a TV show called Runaway, Runaways, in which she played Morgan Le Fay. So I wonder what that's about and if it's something you might enjoy. Well, if it's Morgan Le, Le Fay, it'd have to have something to do with King Arthur, wouldn't it? Or some derivative thereof. Or is After it... d- well, here's the, the tagline. After discovering their parents are supervillains in disguise, a group of teenagers band together to run away from their home in order to atone for their parents' actions and atone for the secrets of their origins. Right. See if she plays an evil witch? Probably. I really don't know who any of these major actors in that show are at all. I've never heard of any of them. What was that one you recommended the other day? Something on Bone? Shadow on Bone, was it? Shadow on Bone. Okay. I forget whether I um, found that or not. If you, yeah, like if you enjoyed Carnival Row, then I think you'll enjoy Shadow on Bone. No, oh, yeah, I did get a copy of it, so no worries. Yeah, I'll watch that at some point. Andrea and I just finished um, Outlander last night. Right. We've been watching that, uh, well, five seasons of it. Yeah, I couldn't get into it. Really? Yeah. Fair enough. Joe watched it. But then she watches 25 times as much TV as I do. <laughs> you got to have a hobby. Well, yeah, this is the problem. This is, I've got 20. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I enjoyed it myself, but, mm. you know... I enjoyed the first two seasons of it more where it was dealing with the the Highlanders and uh, the Stuart Rebellions and all that when they moved the show to America I'm like eh. hmm. but you know kept watching it and there's a new season of it starting airing uh, tomorrow, I guess. So, got that to look forward to. Yep. Well, they're doing a season two of Shadow and Bone. Pretty sure they're doing a season two of Carnival Row. Yeah, that's been filmed for a while, I think. Mm. Excuse me, that was a big, big yawn. (laughs) 
So how much metal are you taking with you on your holiday? None. <laughs> no, there's no painting gear going. That's actually one of the points is just to reset, recharge. By the time I come back, I'll be itchy to paint, which is a good thing. Um, not that I'm not enjoying it, it's just that you appreciate something when you've had a break from it. Well, that's certainly true, I've found that. But when you put yourself under as much pressure as I have to get some of this stuff done, it gets good to have a, a bit less fun. fun. Yeah. Well, yeah, it just it can detract from the experience. Like I was looking at those goblin commanders that I posted the pictures to the Facebook group and thinking, you know, I could have done a fair bit better job of those. Certainly under the heading of good enough, but not much better. Oh, what are they? 14, 15 mil miniatures to, designed to be seen at a range of three feet. That's right. I mean, <laughs> when you put the whole goblin force together, yeah. it still looks pretty good. Yes, I imagine it would. So all I've got left to do on my uh, unit of, um, or whatever they're called. These are the knights, aren't they? No, um, uh, beastmen, beastmen cavalry scouts, I think they are. Right. Um, I need to put some snow and some tufts on the bases, and then put the beastmen on the mounts. Cool. So I hope to have that done today. Now that I've got uh, an unexpected four extra free hours. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. And then I'll uh, prime the ice switches and maybe I'll start those tonight. If it's dried enough. It's still fairly humid here. Yeah. No more storms? Uh, we got. It wasn't a storm. We did get a bit of a heavy downpour yesterday. That's right. You had but, um, a full crash for the afternoon. Yeah, that's right. Mm. So, you remember that unexpected day off work I had on Thursday? Mm -hmm. Turns out the shop wasn't closed at all. Oh, really? And the boss just said, everyone stay home, and came in herself. And I, I had a go at her about it. I said to her, you know, I'm just a 20-minute walk down the road. You should have called. Yeah. You're not supposed to be in the store by yourself. Mm. And I think that's the most upset I've ever been with her because, you know, it's ridiculous. Mm. There's no flood danger for me to cross. And, yeah, it's just... Hmm. Yeah, anyway. Where was the so thing? I got to feel really guilty about, you know, having an unexpected day off. <laughs> <laughs> which wasn't what I wanted at all. No. I wanted to feel good about having an unexpected day off. Everybody does. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, I think we're done for rain for the day. I mean, it's just drizzle from here. I think the rain's gone. Mind you, we're now going to be slogging west across the state, probably slogging right through it. So, mm -hmm. Drizzle the whole way. Road works for the first 30 kilometres. Well, 
Well, that's just driving in Melbourne, though. It is. And other people have made the point that that's just driving in Melbourne. Like, when has the Monash not had road work being done on it? Well, it's because the unions control the government. So there's always, you know, CFMEU-related works going on on some sort of public infrastructure. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't, I'm not claiming who's controlling who, but... Like well, Setka, Setka did control Andrews for the first part of the Andrews government. Mm. Now that Setka's a wife beater, he's uh, mm. lost his grip a little bit. Mm. Um, just making the point that, you know, they put those placards up that says, you know, we'll be reducing your travel time by 10 minutes or 15 minutes or 20 minutes or something like that. When? Yes, when? When we're all dead. And how long will it take you to make up all that reduced travel time in time that you've spent sitting in traffic? In roadways, yeah. <laughs> like, they're working on the Westgate again, and this is the Westgate, this is probably the stretch between the bridge and the ring road. And there were people... Because we're looking at trip times, obviously, which way we're going to go, because we're heading out through Western Victoria. So the obvious choice is to go out through the Westgate and up onto the Ring Road and then out onto the Western Highway. But, I mean, you know, it's Roadwork Central. I was like, well, how much is that going to add? But Because um, there's reduced speed limits right up the Monash because the, they're doing duplication work southeast side of Warrigal Road, Chadston, um, and I was looking up reports, that, you know, travel times and things like that, and there were people saying that, uh, there was one woman said that it took her two hours to travel 17 kilometres in from the west on Monday or Tuesday or something, two hours. Utterly ridiculous. Madness. Right, so I've secret sourced those. You have. So I'm going to bung them in the dehydrator because they'll be ready by half past nine. So what are you going to find something else to do for the next half an hour? Haven't you got half a tank built? I have. <laughs> Let me go get that. Just realised my inset's not working. No, it's not. <laughs> I hadn't noticed that. Obviously, I'm paying attention. I was watching the main screen painting so that must have and trying to catch up on the Facebook. Try that. There it is. So, 
you can see it's a reasonably sizable bit of kit where I got to last night was putting the suspension arms in so they the um, travel control arms and the yeah it's got the motor and gearboxes already in it it's a fair bit of gearing reduction in it that's for sure <laughs> and you take these tiny little um, UM130 I mean they're, they're basically useless on their own but you gear them down like that and and the final drives geared down as well so um, all of a sudden you can get something a tiny little motor like that to produce a fair bit of torque so um, it's good fun I enjoyed putting the spring units together I've enjoyed putting all of it together but, um, yeah. What I might do is I might prep some of this critical mass stuff for painting. Mm -hmm. Critical mass. So these are Arc Fleet Augments. So it's like a special weapons or something? I think they're power armor. Weren't they already power armor? Well, the the ordinary guys are just guys in combat suits. Mm -hmm. If you have a look at it, these guys are super chunky. substantially beefier. Yeah. Bit of flash between the legs. Yes, that's not tassels. No. And he's not a cowboy. Nope. Well. We don't think so, anyway. <laughs> I suppose you could always uh, make a two-scale cowboy hat out of green stuff and mm -hmm. stick it on. Oh, that'd be funny. <laughs> Discord's decided to be idiotic. Yeah, what else is new? <sighs> so I reckon... It's hard to tell, but he looks like he's got some kind of a... pack on. Whether it's a jet pack or something, I don't know. A bit of flash in here.
I feel like I've just poked, smoked a pack of cigarettes. Maybe I've got a cold. Spending all that time in the rain this week. Mm. Three poses. I like the one with the rifle for pointing forward. That's a big ass rifle and it looks uh, pretty cool. That one. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's nice and chunky. So yeah, it's probably worth reiterating that there won't be one of these next week well yeah too busy selling yachts see it. didn't think they worked I might have to ask Ross for the stream keys. <laughs> and come on here and natter away for two hours. <laughs> you think you might suffer a little bit of withdrawal? <laughs> oh, I'll spend the time wisely. Asleep. Uh, no, probably not. What does that mean, spending time wisely? Uh, not procrastinating or jerking off, I think. Now, why would jerking off be considered not wise? Because it's, um... A sin. Oh, if you say so. Well, according to the Bible. Is it? Really? No. Uh, someone, I think it might be in the Bible. Someone or else's interpretation, some, someone's interpretation of it. head to the painting stand. No. no, that would have been an achievement. No, just flicking the super glue everywhere. Well, at least it dries quickly. Best part about um, so it's an exothermic reaction, right? So when you use the the insta set, you speed that reaction up so it releases the energy quicker so if you pour a great big blob of super glue into a tissue and then you drop the insta set on it you can actually set the tissue alight now that would be quite a trick not recommended don't try this at home well, I don't have any uh, insta set no Bob Smith Industries Insta set. 
Now this is an interesting creature. This is the two-seater grav bike. Which is a pretty neat looking thing, I think. Reminds me of uh, the old jet bikes from way back. Yeah. Only I think it's cooler. Anyway. Well, undoubtedly it is because Eldar are kind of lame and boring. Yeah. Or whatever the hell they call them nowadays. Eldar. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, I'm not that keen on the stand. So, throw that away. But you get three three options for your passenger's torso so there's this guy who's pointing imperiously so you know you, you put him on the, the bike and he's like go that way or don't go that way or that's the oh, Indiana Jones that's joke of don't go pointing that way. I thought that was a pistol that he was sticking out no, oh, it's just his finger. Cool. Oh, where am I? How's that for attention to detail? Mm. And so the, there's this gun. This guy who's holding a gun. He's just holding it in a sort of... Boring, ready pose. Ready pose. And then there's this one who's actually aiming. Um... Well, the funny part about this one is just that you can get this one aimed right at the back of the head of the rider. I said go faster, damn it. Mm. So which do I want? I think I might do the pointy pointy one first. Clean up to do one down here. It's a very energetic pointing motion now. Pretty good. Righto. Drill the bottom of it out to put it on the stick.
Okay, there's that. Maybe I just have to keep doing that. Go and get some more packets. It is uh, been 17 minutes since you put them in the dehydrator. Yeah, I've got 12 minutes to run. Maybe I'll dig out one of the single seat bikes. Grenadier, gun crew, drop troops, rifles, grenade launchers, laser cannons, that single seat grav bike. Pretty cool looking thing, I think. Yeah, they are. Nothing like that in this ad strange. No. Looks to me like Arc Fleet have got all the cool toys. Humans and spacesuits? Yeah, why not? Mm. That's what people like. Does need a little bit of clean up. I don't know if you can see this down in here there's a heap of flash between the arms and the bike yeah yeah Let's see if we can get that out You know, it's about time I put a new blade on my hobby knife. Yeah, I've got to see this thing's blunt as um, those suspension arms in that tank, are they ABS? Ooh. <laughs> Obviously, for the, the longevity of the part in use, because. And boy, that stuff's rough on the blade. Like, by the time I got through assembling the six separate suspension assemblies it was blunt yeah. well mine's got the uh, the tip of the blade just snapped off mm -hmm. and uh, the rest of it's gone rusty well, <laughs> but that would have happened given the weather you've had for the last two weeks anyway wouldn't it I mean not not the broken tip. yeah well yeah but <laughs> It's been rusty for a long time yeah. before that too, <laughs> which again is also typical for the weather. Mm. Yeah, keeping tools in good condition must be fairly difficult. In Queensland, I would have thought. Yeah, yeah, I got a, a lot of rust sitting around. This is not quite right either. Yeah. Uh, 
should be able to see the gap there now. Hmm. Yeah, I could see it as you're digging it out. Yeah. I didn't check this one. That's virtually solid. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it out and try. Oh, yeah. Here's where Dan goes on two weeks holiday with tip of a finger missing because he's slipped. That's better. I think. Which ones did you get, Matty? Uh, the critical mass stuff. I got ooh, one or two of everything in the Zath range. Right. So they're also human-looking humans in spacesuits with drones, but no mechs. I don't think there are any mechs, I don't remember seeing any. Yeah, they've got um, heavy weapon platforms, but no um, right. no battle suits or battle anything suits. like that. So I'm just going to assume that Zaz are bad guy humans. <laughs> Since we can't get hold of the books. Yeah. Well, they are whatever we want them to be. Given that we're going to be putting Universal 18 rules together for it. So you tell me what you want them to be. Yeah. Don't laugh. I'm being serious. I know you are. Oh, 
tight. We'll leave those. Put these away. I had to move my tablet. I had a tablet on it, an arm I was using to, to listen to slash watch YouTube while I paint. And I had to move it because I put the new wall climber in for the air airbrush paint. So I got um, so I'm going to have to water another tablet holder that sticks up under the shelf and holds the tab. But what it's done is it's sort of this, there's this area just over here um, has freed that up quite a bit. There used to be something sticking there. So I can get to the <laughs> back of the desk a little bit easier. Have you found a place to stick your whole new set of air paints? Yeah, it's <laughs> in the wall climber. Yeah, there you go. Let me see your photo. There we go. Freshly toasted goblins. <laughs> Freshly toasted. What are you doing sticking them in front of that uh, human rolling fortress with flamethrower? <laughs> yep. Yes, you do seem to be running out of room to put your tablet. Yep. I might suggest less paint, but I know it's not going to happen. <laughs> what, what was that? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't catch that. Yeah, breaking up. Breaking up. Boy, have I got the shakes on today. Excited or nervous? Just stress. Or just shaken. <laughs> always get stressed at the start of a holiday. Like, there's always ridiculous amounts to do like that um, kayak trailer hasn't moved in 12 months so you know to get it out and check tyre pressures and do wheel bearings and WD-40 in the axles <laughs> um, <laughs> yep well it's been under a tarp so So, when we got it, like it was brand new this time 12 months ago, and they delivered it the day before we went away, I think. Yeah. 
Oh no, it was maybe a week before, but um, couldn't get it registered in time. And because it's over three meters in length, it, it has to be registered. <sighs> Anyhow, so we took off with a a number plate made up, which was the registration of a car, and you know a piece of paper that showed that we had the appointment to register it whatever that probably wouldn't have made any difference but anyhow um, so that was still on there but you know it wasn't that long after we got back that they actually did the registration and appointment and got the plate and all that kind of stuff but the plate's been sitting around for 12 months waiting for me to put it on it so I'm out there yesterday 30 degrees, 80% humidity, trying to put a number plate on this thing. It's just like, it's just the stupid little things that, you know. Anyhow, it's done now. One of many things to do. But you know, when. When she gets back from dropping the dogs off, we have to hook it all up together and make sure that it, all the lights are working and all that kind of stuff. And when exactly were you planning on leaving? Was it an hour after this stream? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I've got to have a quick discussion with Ross too before I go, so, you know... <laughs> Uh, I didn't think those things existed. Short discussions with Russ? Hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. Sure we can keep it to under two hours. Oh, man. He looks like... How good are your eyes getting? Um, well, actually, in addition to those uh, Beastman Cavalry Scouts, I did finish up uh, one of the Wizards and Necromancers that's been sitting on a nail for about three months. Mm. And I did the eyes on it, and they're white, and they've got blue irises. Nice. I mean, they're not the world's greatest, um, but better. Well, that's excellent. The basement eyes are easy. They're just red. Right. With a drop of um, Citadel blood over the top. Blood for the blood god. Yeah. Mm. I quite like the way that looks for Beastman. Mm-hmm. And seeing as how I did all the other ones the same way. <laughs> But yeah, my eyes are getting better. Oh, there's not great, but better. And at least I'm attempting them. Yeah. I did those halflings and sadly they all just look surprised. Bigger miniatures though. Oh, like I'd be less intimidated by uh, 28 mil halflings than I would be on 18 mil humans yeah I just picked up the first stand of humans that I could reach and snow barbarians yeah uh, <laughs> not great eyes. These guys look like they've gone blind. Milky white eyes. Yeah, right. <laughs> With some colour that's kind of faded out of them.
These are going alright. They're looking good from what I can see of them. I've really made the mess of the one so far. do. Righto. A little bit of serif and sepia in their mouths. The serif and sepia bottle where the lid doesn't stay open. Well, that's most of them, isn't it? Yep. This one in particular is driving me bonkers. I think we need rat men. Well, I was just looking at my Kickstarter uh, pledge for the uh, Dwarf Adventure Band mm -hmm. and thinking, hmm, it's March. <laughs> I hope I can see these things soon. They're supposed to have started shipping last week. I don't know whether that's actually true or not, but. According to the last update, that's what was going to happen. Well, I only mentioned that because you said Ratman and I ordered a, a, some, a set of Ratman in that too. Mm -hmm. Mostly because I thought they looked cool. I went berserk on that particular Kickstarter. One of everything? One Two of everything? No, that was just... I got one of almost everything. I didn't go for the other dwarf band, but I did get all the goblins and the ratmen mm. and lots of bases. rumour that there might be another box on its way to me to get to me by the time I get back from my holiday for something that needs doing for a kickstarter <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> yes because like I did the first three halflings but there's a whole bunch of other stuff in there as well to go with the same kickstarter villages and I think there might even be some village accessories well, that might be cool hmm. oh, see Having run afoul of chicken counting already this week,
Well, you might be pleasantly surprised. Might be. I was pleasantly bloody surprised by that yacht turning up, so maybe I shouldn't get greedy. Yeah, well, I was kind of blown away when you said 20, 20 hours mm. from door to door. I mean, I'm surprised when I get that kind of service from something a few suburbs over in Brisbane. Mm. And I frequently don't. No. Even pre-COVID. Well, there, there certainly was a point in time where... Um, I could get stuff faster from the US than I could get it from New South Wales. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I do remember. But, um, that's, uh... That delivery yesterday sort of set me on back on my heels a little bit. It's like, wow, who'd have thunk? Well, you didn't. You're all prepped to go on holiday without it, and here you are. No, I'm going and you got it. both boxes. Yes, I'm not taking the tank. I thought you were going to have the tank and run it around some sand dunes or something. <laughs> no. Take a fair few more hours to finish assembling that, because it's, it's the one that comes with the turret rotation kit as well. So there's another complete gearbox got to go into it, which of course means another complete gearbox that has to be assembled. Hmm. Uh, You'll have to figure out a way to convert the barrel to run on air pressure as well. If I wanted to swap it out for a uh, an air cannon, BB air cannon, that would be probably doable. Probably a lot easier in the 16th scale stuff though, rather than the 25th scale stuff. But we'll see. Like, if I get the taste of it, you never know, I might start buying those 1 16th kits. One of those a year. Because <laughs> they're not cheap. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it to a bane blade and you know the bane blade's not big enough really? yeah that bane blade will be smaller than that centurion by the time I finish that centurion I always thought those bane blades were like two foot long no no they're not why don't I go and get that and show you There's the bane blade. Mm. And that's the centurion hole. Well, I'll be. So the bane blade, while it's a big big tank for you know, 40k, it's actually not really a big tank, like a big model. Mm. The thing about them is, is that they're quite wide. Like, because they've got these sponson turrets so makes them look a little bit wider a little bit fatter but you can see that like if I show you the this the centurion's gonna have the same track width mm. so, mind you okay this is 1 to 25 and this is notionally 1 to 56 so a 125th scale model of this would be every bit as impressive got some movie bits on them yeah well wow. Now there's your next summer project. What's a radio-controlled bane blade? Hmm. 
do a, do a Google search. I'm sure somebody's done one. Probably have. All we need to do is get a hold of that super scaled Mad Cat that Ross has got in Radio Control Lab. Now that would be interesting. Mm. So yeah. A unit of goblins ready to base. How are you going with the blade itself? I am halfway through the second book of the first trilogy, actually. Right. So what's the, the second uh, book? Before they're hanged. Before they're hanged, yeah. Yeah. Six weeks into the siege of Dagosta or something like that. Yeah, right. Yes, I'm probably a weirdo, but Glockter is my favourite character. Uh, by far. Mm. Absolutely by far. Sand and Glockter. <laughs> the man whose greatest enemy is a set of stairs. <laughs> yes, that was a fantastic introduction to the character. Yeah. And honestly, that second chapter of the first book, where it's blocked his point of view and he's battling the stairs, yeah. that's what sold me on it, and that's why I kept listening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> jab, jab. Jab, jab. No, I found it very entertaining. Very imaginative, very entertaining. And, and yet relatable. Yeah. Um, it would be no surprise to you to realise that one of my cats is called Logan. <laughs> Fair enough. Yes. The bloody nine. <laughs> what do you think of Pharaoh? Uh, a little bit crazy. <laughs> well, you know, when Pharaoh was introduced at the start of part two of the first book, I'm like, do we really need this extra character who's just angry all the time? No. Because we've kind of got that already. <laughs> yes, yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> and it, it all blows together, so I have to be very careful about what I say, because I do not want to spoil it. Uh, where that party is up to, um, what's his, Giselle has just had his face smashed in. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. I have actually had a little bit of what happens further on spoiled for me, quite by accident. Yeah, don't do that. It's actually... Yeah. yeah. Does take some of the tension out of it. Yeah, I love, I love the contest, where Bias is <laughs> on the important points. Bias is um, projecting all the energy into Giselle, 
Uh, <laughs> Lucan looks over at him and goes, "Fucking cheating!" <laughs> yeah, that was Never pretty bet good. Against the wizard. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, boy, it shows his true colours. Well, that is why you became a Magi, wasn't it? Yeah. To cheat. <laughs> See, it's, well, it's the very definition thereof, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah, I have enjoyed it quite a lot. And yeah. Thank you for getting me onto it. No, no, right. You weren't the first person to recommend it to me, but you're the one who sold me on it. Right. No, it's, it's good. And there's there's follow-up books it's not a trilogy they're isolated stories but the characters yeah i've got all those as well yeah um red country i don't have the second trilogy yet i should look for that today the 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 oh i can't remember um i'm up to the second book of that um i just we i just haven't been listening to audiobooks so I've got like 30 audio books I haven't listened to or something. It's ridiculous. Well, maybe you do some of that on your holiday. Yeah. That, that definitely could be a plan. Um, Red Country is my favourite of the follow-ons. That's the short stories book, is it? No. no. It's a novel in and of itself. Okay. Um, I didn't mind the heroes I thought the heroes was pretty cool um, what's the other one I don't know I'm not up to them yet <laughs> wow that's Why didn't you just go to library, idiot? Yeah, best served cold, the heroes, red country, and sharp ends. Yeah, see, best served cold is great too, but it's it's dark. It's oh boy, it's dark. Um, well, you know. The blade itself isn't exactly sunshine and roses. Oh no, but but best served cold is it go it amps it up another notch. Like they are very very dark characters. Um, and it gets Good. to the end of it, and you wonder whether or not. No, I'm not not even going to say anything. It's it's like, yeah, it, it's a good read. I I enjoyed it, but oof, it's dark. Um, yeah, no, Red Country is absolutely. Um, from my mind it's the best of those three or at least it was the, the one that I enjoyed the most of those three um, so the second trilogy is the Age of Madness and the one that I'm up to is the Trouble with Peace But he's finishing yeah, yeah, the trilogy off because now there's the the wisdom of crowds, which is book three. So I only still need to to listen to book two and book three. It's just I haven't been listening to audio books. I picked up a I started listening to Number of the Beast, Heinlein, while I was walking. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunately it's dated. Well, Heinlein did die 40 years ago. Yeah, I, I realise that, but, you know, like... Yeah, I it, know. It I know been, what you mean. I know. <laughs> it would have been very modern and very progressive at the time that it was released, and it's just a little bit cringeworthy now. You know, it suffers from the fact that some of the characters are, in quotes, too good. <laughs> spends all his time talking about how flawed he is when he managed to succeed you know, doing everything flawlessly. It's just like... Mm. 
Let me see if I can move it on. Yeah. Can't get over how blunt that blade was. You're alright if it can cut butter. <laughs> I can't believe it's not butter. So, it's time. Time. Did you... Had you... And I wish you a fantastic holiday, full of uh, relaxing times and no stress. I expect to be doing sleeping, relaxing and kayaking in equal measures. And the relaxating, relaxing will include sailing a radio-controlled yacht. Which Excellent. I better put my retuning book in. <sighs> yeah. Um, thanks for the company this morning. I really appreciate it. And, and thank you for yours. For the for the last twelve months in general, it's been bearable. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I, I'm really enjoying this the the Saturday morning interaction. It's uh, it's a highlight of my week. So. Well, thank you for your continued support and friendship and advice and, and all that, you know. You're welcome. You've opened a, or reopened a, a world to me I once enjoyed and long since moved on from, you know, which is fantastic because I'm having a lot of fun doing it. Mm. I'm really glad. I hope we can get some other people to do so as well. One day. Well, yeah, yeah. Hi, Ross. <laughs> Alright, signing off. Adieu. See you in a while. I'll be the same. <laughs>